This is a modded DSL 100. This is uh, one of the uh, more recent made in Vietnam based models. Look, I've had a, you know, I've been working on the stamp now for three or four days off and on. A um, couple of hours here and there on the bench. To me, it looks like it's come from the exact same factory, not surprising, as the Origin and also the Studio uh, Classic. Now, like the previous video comparing the Origin and the and the SD20, they look like they've come from the same place component-wise, although obviously the Studio Classic is assembled in England. This looks like it's come from the same factory. Transformers obviously are bigger, but they look the same. The components inside the amp very similar. Same kind of PCB. Now, when I first got this amp, um, it sounded like this. Now, it's come in uh, from a local player who wants me to work on the Ultra Gain channel. Okay, um, what he's looking for is um, take out a bit of fizz in the top end, see if we can get some more clarity um, in through uh, that channel. Now, I have never owned one of these amps and I've never actually played through one of them either until now. So I've just set it up here and um, what I will do is I just want to see if I can get some, you know, what sort of tones I can get out of this thing. I always want to record, before I mod any amp, I always record it using the setup beforehand so I can, you know, have a reference point, right, um, for the mod so that they become more objective rather than subjective. So starting with the classic gain channel, right, this amp is set up, it's got two main channels, got the classic gain and the ultra gain, and with each, within each of these channels, you've got a clean, you know, like you've got a clean or a crunch here, and then you've got a lead one and the lead two. So it's basically a four channel amp, but kind of grouped into the into the two main channels. So starting with classic gain, um, this is kind of what we've got. Got the volume here right on midday, and we've got the gain here at about uh, 1 30, 2 pm perhaps. Everything else is pretty much midday, right? Through the EQ of the amp, presence is midday. I've got the resonance only just on, it's about you know, one and a half of 10. Um, this Pete Thorn signature guitar, these the Thorn Buckers in it, I've got it set in single coil mode on the neck. If I go to full humbucking, we'll just try the compressor on in front of this this clean channel. So I've gone back to the single here. Let's hear, hear how this sounds with a bit of compression up front. Sounds pretty good. I like the compressor up front, really, really cool. Let's move to the crunch mode of this. I might bring the volume back a bit. Just try and equalize our volumes here. Okay, we're probably more into plexi territory here. Well, I haven't studied the schematic in any great detail yet, which I will do before we get into modding. But now we're starting to sound a bit more like, you know, a super lead.
sounds like a marshal to me. Right, this tone shift uh, switch here in the middle of the EQ. Let's hear this. <laughs> Well, it's pretty obvious what I like. I like it with it out. That sounds like a classic Marshall tone stack to me. Preston. <laughs> nah, it's all scooped, lost its bite. I don't like that. Let's move it to the uh, other channel. And I think I'm in lead one mode here. Got the gain at midday. Okay, it's a bit brittle, is the way I'd describe it. it it's, let's see if I can do something about it, right? So, I'll bring this bass up a little bit, take a bit of treble out, um, maybe a little bit more gain, just a touch, because there might be a bright cap in here that's um, adding to that. No, it's starting to get mushy. Kind of sounds to me like there's too much bottom end going through the early parts of the preamp to me. So we'll see about that. Okay, let's move to lead two, which I'm expecting to be uh, high again. Ooh, lots of bottom end. Not a huge fan of that sound. Let's try this. It's a little bit harsh. Um, right, well that's the baseline. Let's see what we can do with this thing. So with all that in mind, what I've been doing um, with my approach to the mods to this thing is to you know, try and take some bass out of the early stages of the amp, right? Because it's, it was clearly getting far too um, woolly and flubby and just at, you know very much out of control. Um, also, too much gain. It's just the gain just stacks in this thing um, and becomes, you know, uncontrollable, which I think is contributing a lot to the lack of clarity in the stock amp. And 
when I was playing with this, um, you know, when I first uh, received it, I could not get this game pot above midday without the thing just becoming complete mush, right? So I've um, taken base out, I've lowered the gain so you get a you know much more kind of gradual build up of gain through the gain stages because this amp and it does have a lot of gain stages, a lot more than you know you have in the traditional um, Marshalls. But um, I'll just go through a few basic sounds that we've got here because I've really just worked on the lead channel. I've left the classic uh, channel alone. The owner of the amp was fine with that, right? The clean and the the kind of the plexi style sounds in the in the classic channel. You know, kind of leave those alone. Focus my attention on the gain side, which is what I've done. So let's have a listen to um, what this sounds like. I've got the, in fact, I'll bring the, I'll go to the lead one channel, right? This is the lower gain of the two. And um, I've got the gain here at about 1.30, okay? I've got the treble at about 11 a.m. Um, so that's the volume. I've got the treble on about 11 a.m. I've got the middle, mids about midday, and I've got the bass um, back at about 11 a.m. as well. The presence is just back from midday. The resonance is only just on. It's about 1 uh, of 10. The reverb on the amp is completely off. The master volume is up at about... 10 a.m., 9.30 maybe. It's running into my reactive load here, the Sur, into uh, an ML Sound Lab uh, Greenback IR, which is loaded into the XFX, and from there, through this PCM80 and stereo, into uh, the Apollo interface and then into Logic. Right, so this is what you're hearing. There's no processing in front of the amp. The guitar is coming straight into the front. Um, and there's no post-processing other than the, uh, obviously the IR and the X and the PCM80, which is um, on a panned delay sound. So this is the sound of the amp in the lower of the lead gain mode now. <laughs> taking a lot of that kind of mushy bottom end out like it's still not quite the classic classic vintage martial sound that I was seeking right let's go to the uh, second gain channel and um, again I bought these closer together right so in the stock amp I found that you know I kind of get the gain the gain one into a kind of reasonable position I go to gain two and it's just it was just out of control. Too much gain, too much bottom end. So the, the difference between the two is a bit more subtle now, but it's there. So if I play a chord and I'll bring the gain to it, and you'll hear it come in. <laughs> up through the mid-range there.
true test of an amp that I'm modding is will I play it? <laughs> right? So get to the point where if I can actually just play and start playing, I almost forget about the amp. Um, that's when I know that I'm kind of getting into the point where, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this, where it's getting to, right? It's an incremental process. I try a few things. Um, I definitely come from a starting point where, uh, you know, I would have studied the amp. I'll look at um, and study previous mods and I'll leverage anything I can, right? If someone's already made, you know, some really good work on something um, and posted it on the internet, then absolutely I will look at that, see if I can leverage the ideas. Um, so it's very much an incremental process and um, I actually do it. Well, let me show you what I do. So along with changing components on the bench and testing it while it's still there, this is what I do. I bring the amp into the studio here and I just play it. And while I'm playing, I'm actually looking at the schematic of the amp. And I'm, as I'm hearing things and feeling things through the fingers, I'm looking at the schematic to identify what I think might I, bet I might be able to change in order to get the sound that I'm searching for. So let's look at the mods themselves, right? As I mentioned, um, when I approach modding an amp circuit for the first time, I'll of course, we'll start with research on the amp, right? Downloading schematics, making sure they match the amp that I've got, but also looking around on other threads and so on. So, you know, again, it's a fantastic thread here, which I found on the Marshall Forum. So this is Joey, right? This is Joey Voltage. Um, as he goes by from Slow Clone. Um, I've mentioned Joey actually on the, my previous video about the SAT wiring on a Friedman. And um, Joey's very generous with his information and knowledge and incredibly helpful. And uh, someone's put together um, on here, right, the main mods from Joey with respect to the DSL100. So this was a starting point for me. I took it a lot further, but um, as you'll see when I get into the schematic itself, but you know, these suggestions in here were a pretty helpful kind of starting point. All right, so do check this thread out and read through it because there's some information in here that describes you know, what these changes are actually looking uh, to achieve. And probably the most important thing here is this note here, which says there's at least five different versions of the PCB used in the DSL 100, right? So you've got the JCM 2000 series, now, you know, badge just as the DSL 100. There are different versions of the board. So the, the one that I had in for modding, I had to go to this link here and, um, you know, basically find the schematic that matched uh, the amp that I had, which I did from, you know, the version numbers and also just checking component by component. So I could kind of look at the, you know, the resistor value or capacitive value in a bunch of locations and match it, match it against a schematic and then I realize, yep, I've got the right one. Okay, so let's get into the guts of the schematic, right? I'll just walk through this. Uh, remember, um, I've only worked on uh, the gain channel here, right? So, you know, the uh, lead one and lead two modes of the gain channel um, itself and I've just marked this up right so these markups in red are obviously uh, the changes that I've made so I'll just step through them and uh, seek to describe what each of them is kind of doing at a high level from here we'll actually look at some pictures of the changes to the board right so if you kind of want to do these mods and you're not really interested in looking at the schematic right you want to get straight into 
digging into the amp with the soldering on, you might want to skip to the next section. Okay, your guitar input comes in here. Okay, this is the first gain stage of E1A. And you can see this is a relay here, right? So when you flick between the, uh, the lead channel and the clean, clean crunch, your guitar signal is flicking through either this pathway here for the lead or down here. And this is set up for the clean, uh, clean channel, right? And clean and crunch, right? As I said, I kind of didn't, uh, didn't touch all that. So through these changes, right? Remove C11 and put this 470 picofarad up on the plate resistor instead. Um, it's just, you know, as a preference, it's a, um, what this is doing basically is, is washing off a little bit of very high end frequency out of your, uh, out of the signal that's taken by this gain stage here. I also reduced this um, 4.7 microfarad electrolytic cap, pull that out and replace it with a one. It will uh, give you the same amount of gain through the kind of mid range and high end but it will reduce the amount of gain at the at the bottom, you know, the base frequencies, right? So and you'll see the theme as we go through this is very much trying to control the amount of base that's been pushed through the preamp because this is, if you don't control the base, you get that big woolly, you know, fluffy, flubby sound, right? Um, so that's what we're doing there. Your guitar signal comes through here and through another coupling cap, all right? So 22 nanofarad there, I left that alone. I could have reduced this one, but if I reduce the value of this, I'll be impacting the clean channel as well. So uh, per Joey's recommendation in the thread that I just referred to, taking this 4N7 down to 2N2, right? What this is doing is knocking off bottom end out of your guitar signal. Um, all high gain amps do this, right? Um, Keep these keep the base quite tight and 2.2 nanofarads, very common value to use for your first coupling cap in early gain stages in a higher gain amp. Um, there was a recommendation in that thread I've just referred to to um, remove this 47k resistor and just link it, which I did try. Um, is okay, right? But what I ended up doing, as you can see here, is I pulled that out and I actually put a four, 470 picofarad. The reason I did that is just this was too hard to remove because I'd already had the board in. Put these in series, you've got about 380, 390 picofarad. And what I was trying to simulate here is effectively what you would see in a JCM800 when you um, come out of that first gain stage before it comes into the gain pot, you've got a 470K resistor bypass with a 470 picofarad ceramic cap. All right, so that's exactly what I'm doing there. You could pull that out, but when I did that, I had 390 picofarad there. To, you know, to, to my ears, it sounded, sounded about where I wanted it. The higher value, of course, is uh, you'll be letting through um, uh, slightly lower frequencies in that high-end range. Um, next thing. All right, so this 150K resistor here in R32, which is stock, I changed to 220, but I didn't just drop it in the same place. You'll see what I did when I look at the pictures, but what's happening here is that 220K um, only is in the circuit when it's on gain, a uh, lead one mode. When it goes to lead two, that 150 comes out. What it's doing is it's in parallel with your gain pot, right? This is a one meg gain pot. As soon as you put that resistor in parallel, you've got a combine, combine resistance of 150K and one meg in parallel. It's reducing the gain, right? Because you're getting um, more signal being pushed or shunted to ground through a lower, lower total resistance here. Um, in uh, seeking to kind of reduce actually the amount of gain that's coming through these early stages of the preamp and allow a more usable range on the preamp, right? Because stock, I couldn't get the gain on this more past midday without it freaking out, becoming too flubby. So I put a 220K in here and it made it permanent. So this relay here, or this part of the relay, because here's the other part over here, um, is not used. All right, so that 220K is always in the circuit. Um, this 470 picofarad bright cap, this is a bright cap on the gain pot, 
in this amp, when I opened it up and got to work on it, this had been clipped. Someone had gone on there with some cutters and gone. All right, it's probably one of the reasons why it was lacking a bit of you know, balance, right? In terms of it was a very bassy kind of sounding amp because the bright cap wasn't in play at all. And if you've seen some of the videos or you know how to work an amp with a bright cap on a game pot, you can use it to EQ the bottom end in your amp. Um, get that right balance, right? So, um, but 470 in this amp is probably a bit, you know, a bit too much, right? So I set it on 220. I tried 100 in here and it wasn't really enough for me. So I went to 220. You can play with that, right? Anywhere between 100 and 470, depending on how much bite and aggression that you want. This one meg to ground here is added. Again, it's helping to carve out some bottom end of the signal. That was a suggestion in Joey's thread. This 470, remove. This 470 pick if I would remove all of these things here are dumping high end to ground, all right? So it's 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 carving out high, uh, nice high end harmonics out of your signal, right? Which I didn't want to do. I'll do that later in the circuit over here. We'll get to that. So again, if you like a really kind of you know really rounded off darker sound, maybe a bit more Friedman esque leave these in, maybe just get rid of one of them. But yeah, the sound that you heard on the clip, these are these are both out. Um, the cathode setup on V1B, I ended up with a very classic uh, modded Marshall 2K7 and 0.68 microfarad, nothing new there, guys. Um, again, this, you know, this one microfarad here, it's just letting in too much bottom end for me and you can see what's actually happening in the stock amp is that the relay there flicks um here's you know sw3a and sw3b they're the two to double pole double throw relay so when it activates they both toggle and when you go to lead two mode this bypass cap here on the cathode gets a ground reference and so it basically comes into the circuit otherwise it's 10k to ground which will basically neutralize you know, mostly neutralize the effect of that bypass cap so that's still in play right even though i as i said on the 220 i left that permanently in the circuit when you flick to the lead two mode we're bringing in this bypass cap here um change just one meg to 470 so what i actually did was i just shunted or in parallel i should say put another one meg resistor on top of r27 you could pull it out and put a 470 in of course um but you know i put two one megs in parallel 500k you know give or take 30k right but you get the idea again just um keeping the the gain through here under under control and the last mod in the circuit is again this is a very common thing you'll see in a bunch of Friedman amps and other other things is right on the cathode this is the cathode follower now right so we've moved some more gain stages here we're back to some cla pretty classic looking Marshall setup with 1k on this gain stage here on the cathode you know uh, the grid of the cathode follower off the plate of, of the preceding stage with 100k up there so this is um this is pretty common guys all right we've all seen this in marshalls and then 100k to ground on the cathode follower so you put a 470 pick a farad in parallel um and that finally takes off a bit of uh the top end without it doing it without doing it too early in the circuit so you, you know retaining those higher order harmonics um to get some you know drive and distortion through these tube stages or through these gain stages here and then from there on and we're stock right we're into the tone stack and um away we go so let's step through the changes uh on the pcb itself and when i talk through them i'll attempt to do them in the sequence that you know kind of matches the schematic that we just looked at um this is obviously top level picture we're, we're looking at here, right? So um, all the changes are actually visible um, 
in this picture. But I will actually, you know, I've got four or five uh, picks here to go through, right? So you know, I'll zoom in on the on the relevant areas. But let me just highlight kind of some of the changes, right? So you can see, you know, C11 moved here. This this is a 470 pick the ferret cap here, bypassed across. This is the um, uh, the plate resistor on V1A. Okay. This is the um, uh, one microfarad uh, electrolytic cap that's on the cathode of V1A. I think it's a four um, four point seven microfarad in the stock amp. Okay. This is a cathode for V1B. You can see, right, this is V1A here. On, this is a tube socket, right, V1A. This is V1B. Um, 2K7 resistor, okay, here. And here's our 0.68 microfarad uh, bypass cap. Okay, this big yellow guy here, this is a 2.2 nanofarad. <laughs> 2N2, yeah, coupling cap, right, coming out of the first stage here. So, um, you can use anything in here, right? You can use a, you know, like a Wilma cap. Um, you could, you know, caps that, that are similar to this, right? You can get these ones. These are these are polyester coupling caps, you know, kind of mustard style. I've got a bunch of them. Uh, they went in, in here just fine. A um, bunch of things happening down here, which is really those changes that you know are, are kind of concentrated around. Where the gain pot is, and this is the this is the gain pot here, actually, right? These these square things that are mounted on the PCB doesn't look like a normal pot, does it? But yeah, these are the PCB mounted pots that are in the sim. Um, so I've got a better photo of this, but you can see the new coupling cap here. It's the same as this one, two n two. Moving here, this is actually stock, right? So this is a four seventy k to ground R forty two in the schematic. You can play with this value if you're finding the amp still has too much gain and too much bottom end. So you can drop it down to 220, even down to 100. What you'll find is that you're really changing um, the feel of the amp and the and the kind of overall gaininess of this thing because it's dropping more signal to ground. Um, so early on in the mod, and this is suggested in the you know Joey's um, list of mods just to drop this down to 220. So I did try that. Um, the one side I kind of completed my work here, I was getting through it. I ended up putting this back up to 470 because it was just I was losing, losing too much gain um, as we go into the latter stages of the amp. Right, this is kind of V2B here, right? So we're kind of pushing much further down in the preamp, um, and then I'm going to go all the way over here. This 100k resistor here is that 100k to ground. Right, is ground point here. On the cathode follower, All right, so this is V3B, and this goes off and drives the tone stack. This is a 100K, so this is our 470 picofarad to ground, which is just you know wide and parallel in the same way that you do it on the plate resistor here. So here I've just zoomed in a bit on what's happening around V1 in the early stages. Um, you can see here C11's just come straight out. Here's our 470 um, picofarad on what's R15 okay in the schematic um, you can see here this is the one um, microfarad that's in there on the cathode of V1A so flicking back to the schematic quickly here right this is the the one microfarad we're talking about it's on C12 here's our 470 on R15 and C11 uh, which is out of the picture C23, this is our 2N2. And here's the 2N2 right here, right, which is re uh, being replaced. Here's our R18, the 2K7, and the 0.68 microfarad C13. Put straight in there. Okay, the next piece that we're going to look at, and all these bunch of changes in here, they're all kind of quite tightly put together. In the same part of the board, so um, yeah, I'll, I will kind of talk about you know was it one, two, three, four, 
and this one here, five uh, changes, which are all nestled in the same part of the board. And here they all are. All right, so dealing with R32 first, that's that 150K resistor that I mentioned in the schematic review is toggled to ground using one side of the relay. Would be the relay down here. So I pulled that out. I've actually, still, you can see it's still in here, right? But before I finished the amp and close it up, I'll pull that out. This is kind of a work in progress. So um, this is the ground side of it, and this is the side that um, is at the uh, input to the gain pot. Okay. So what I've actually got is this 220K. This is a 220K resistor here, or 221K resistor, this brown one. It's, it's soldered into the top of R32, and the other side of it goes to a ground point. I have another photo. I can show you where, how that's soldered in. Okay. Um, likewise, we have the 1 meg resistor that we want uh, soldered to the wiper, or the, you know, the middle pin of our gain pot and that's also so that's coming into this side of C19 all right so if you look at the schematic you'll see that one side of C19 is soldered or connected to um, the wiper on the gain pot so that's off there and it goes to the same ground point over here all right this was 470 picofarad in the stock amp this is the bright cap this blue guy so now that's that's a 220 picofarad, right? So that's just direct drop in on C19. R26 is that resistor that um, in the stock amp, um, I can't remember its value. Let's have a look. And here it is in the stock amp. It's 47K, right? So as I said, we'll replace that with a 470 to get a com combined capacitance here of about 390 picofarad. So that's just a direct drop-in uh, replacement line so and here's the coupling cap again that's pulled out and replaced with the uh, 2N2 and so that's that one there right that's C17 pulled out and there's our 2N2 that are there um, C15 C22 you just pull those straight out of the board um, you can clip them out or solder them out so this R31 here, I just want to point this out, right? And the reason being is because we use the ground point on this to um, uh, connect a bunch of these components to ground. So you can see it here, right? It's R31, it's 10 meg, it's got a ground reference here. And here's the other angle of the mods around this area that I said I would show, right? So this is our 221K resistor. Um, which as I mentioned replaces this guy but it's permanently in the circuit so I've got one side of it here and the other side's going to the ground point this, so this is R31 here this side of R31 closest to the pot is ground All right, so I've um, tied those le you know, the legs of those resistors and this one here which is the um, one meg to ground off the gain wiper, um, I've tied the legs of those underneath uh, the leg of this resistor and soldered them in there. Um, you can see this is the new coupling cap and you can see the leads are just bent over and you know soldered straight into the top of the board there, no problem. And last but not least, this is the 470 picofarad um, low pass uh, filter, right? on. C43, this is the 100K cathode resistor on the cathode follower, V3B. And you can just, you know, solder this guy in, in parallel straight over the top of that. And that'll take care of that, um, you know, wiping out a bit of top end um, at the end of the preamp.